Nizal Isle, a relentless climb of 100 floors requiring you pass a variety of objectives in order to progress. From exciting boss battles every 20 floors, finding the specified enemy, or simply pulling your hair out over lamp orders, this event had something for everyone. What's going on guys and welcome to the Mog House. Today we are continuing the Let's Make a Mythic series with quite possibly my favourite event in Final Fantasy XI, Nizal Isle. Requiring coordination and communication, just reaching floor 100 of Nizal Isle and beating the final boss is a prerequisite before you can even think of making a mythic weapon. In today's world, this can be done solo, steadily chipping away as your progress is saved every five floors that you complete. However, you will only be given token rewards and your progress will only be saved if you choose to exit at a rune of transfer before the 30 minute time limit has elapsed, and the option to exit is only available once that floor's objective is complete, so don't think you can warp up to the next floor and flee if you get an objective you don't like. Once you go up, it's sink or swim. If you're working towards the mythic weapon, you'll have already beaten the floor 100 boss and will be farming the 150,000 tokens in order to purchase the Rim Seeker Arrowhead from Zashal. I wouldn't recommend doing the higher level version of Nizal Isle, as I don't find the token reward to be as good as the original. Personally, I think this event is best suited for three people, or at least two people with one player dual boxing a mule or alt that can be left at the Rune of Transfer. You could also rotate someone to stay at the rune each floor, and I do recommend someone stay at the rune of transfer, as it saves having to backtrack in order to warp up once the floor objectives are complete. I wouldn't say that any particular job is the best for this, but I would recommend something that can deal out a lot of damage, maybe the ability to self-heal, and of course, AoE magic or weapon skills can also help to speed things up. If you're solo, you've no choice but to pay the token cost of warping to your starting floor of choice, which if you're token farming is always going to be floor 96. I appreciate that in this day and age you're not always going to have a partner or group for this, but it can be counterproductive to use your tokens to enter, especially when solo runs can often be thwarted by lamp order floors. If you're in a group, rotate who fronts the token bill to enter and if an alt or mule is present, always use that character's token since they aren't using them for the mythic. As for the event itself, keep an eye on the clock. You've got 30 minutes and you have to exit on a floor whose objective has been cleared in order to claim your tokens. Either make a mental note of the time you entered or use a stopwatch on your phone, and once you're getting within 5 minutes of your time remaining, start thinking about exiting. Remember. Taking a safe but lower token reward is better than getting greedy, taking risks and failing for no tokens at all. Each floor will present you with one of six objectives, and each has a random chance of appearing on any given floor, so there is no pattern or way of determining what is coming next. I'll go through each one with a brief outline of how they work, but for the most part it is really self-explanatory. The first is the free floor. This is extremely rare. I've done countless Nizal Isle runs and have only had a handful of these. There is nothing for you to do here, simply use the rune of transfer to warp up to the next floor. The second is to eliminate a specified enemy. This is almost as good as a free floor sometimes. The monster you are looking for is a regular monster type, but that checks as impossible to gauge. Simply track down the monster, kill it and warp up to the next floor. The next is eliminate all enemies, pretty self explanatory. Although this is a kill everything that moves type of objective, you should note that archaic gears that may be on the floor do not count towards the objective, so they can be ignored. Eliminate specified enemies is where a certain monster group with the same name needs to be defeated. Heraldic imps, psych flayers, pirogo gents, ebony puddings, racing chariots, or the Kirin treasure hunter and Kirin archaeologists will all check as impossible to gauge and there will be 3 to 5 of them to defeat in order to progress. Sometimes members of the same family such as flans or imps will appear on the floor but will not be a part of the specified enemies. These will have different names and they won't check as impossible to gauge. The next objective type is eliminate the enemy leader. The hardest part about this objective is often finding the mob to kill, but what you're dealing with is a single, unique, notorious monster from either the Chariot, Flan, Imp, Kirin, Soul Flare, or Paroko mob types. Seek and destroy in order to clear the objective. The final objective type is activate all lamps, which is often met with a sigh and a groan, as this can go one of three ways. The first is where you'll need to have each party member find and touch one lamp. 
Once all party members have touched the lamp, the Rune of Transfer activates and players can warp up to the next floor. The next variation is activate lamps at the same time. So this floor will have 3 to 5 lamps which need to be activated at the same time, which used to be exactly what it said on the tin and would require coordination to turn the lamps on all together. But due to changes to the event over time, same time lamps actually stay on now for 5 minutes, meaning you basically need to turn every lamp on as and when you find it. Once the final lamp has been activated, the objective will be cleared. The third and final variation of lamp floors is the specific order. This is usually the most time consuming and has given headaches to many players over the years, but the concept is relatively simple once you understand it. The floor will consist of three to five lamps which need to be activated in a specific sequence in order to clear the objective. As you progress through the floor, activate each lamp you come across and I would recommend labelling each one with a number, 1, 2, 3, etc. as you go. If you're in a group, label these in the party chat, so if I'm player 1 for example, I put and I find the first lamp, I would put 1 in the party chat, the next person to find 1 puts 2, so on and so forth. Once you've found the final lamp on the floor, all lamps light up and either stay lit or turn off. Those that stay lit indicate they have been activated at the right point in the sequence, and those that have turned off have not. For example, if there are three lamps on the floor and you activate lamp 1, then lamp 2, and finally lamp 3, they all light up and lamp 2 remains lit, but 1 and 3 turn off, you know the correct sequence must be lamp 3, lamp 2, then lamp 1. Even though lamps stay on to indicate they were activated in the correct part of the sequence, they will need to be reactivated each time you enter a new sequence. So in my previous example, you would still need to travel to and activate lamp 2 when entering the correct sequence. Again, once the 5 minute warning appears, think about exiting. If you've obtained the Rhapsody of Azur key item from Chapter 1 Mission 16 of the Rhapsodies of Vanadil questline, you'll receive a new assault tag every 10 minutes, so there really is absolutely no reason to take any risks or just push for one more floor. If you do find yourself solo for this, consider a quick shout in town as there are plenty of other people who will need tokens just as much as you. And if you're on the Odin server, feel free to hit me up on Tossic or Alores and I'll happily tag along with you. That's it for this video, and I will see you next time for the next part of the Mythic Making Progress. Take care.